So you have this model, theory, vocabulary, ontology, whatever you want to call it. There's six states, but it's crucial that there are these arrows between them and they're unique. Right? You know how to go from one to the other with the different operations. And so that is what you would call well-defined. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole nother theory model. There's two states, and it's clear how to go back and forth between them. And there's this non-trivial statement that the second theory is a coarse graining of the first theory, that you can derive the second theory by forgetting details about the first theory. Exactly. And in this finite uh, number of states example, that just goes through, and we're happy. And then the punchline is, once you have an infinite number of states, it is in principle impossible to do that. It's, um, so, you know, you can, you can do it in certain cases. But in general, things like entanglement, so you'll never know. You'll, you'll never know. There's no sort of universal principle for doing this, right? Universal so, principle for doing what? For so here, um, so again, I'll do the example. So from here, I course grain and got this high level theory. I can tell this is consistent with this. I can tell that you know all the behaviors this produce. I can get from a course graining of behaviors this produces, and so forth. Now, say I have a model of a process that I believe is more sophisticated than that that can be represented by a finite state machine. Say I have some theory, right? And so for example, if we believe people are Turing machines, our theory of psychology is something. Right? Say I have some theory in which I don't which I don't I can't represent this way. Many things become true. So for example, I might have two theories that are actually equivalent, that, that predict the same behaviors, but just by looking at the structure of the theories, I can't tell that they do that. It's undecided. You can't tell general. they do what? I can't tell if they, okay, technically, I can't tell they recognize the same language. Uh, are you, or I'm thoroughly confused. I, I, you could, could be saying one of two things, and you're probably saying neither, but these are the only ones I can think of. One is that uh, there are systems, formal systems, physical systems, which cannot be the coarse graining of some other system, or you're saying that there are systems uh, which, to which the renormalization group cannot be applied so that no other system can be gotten by coarse graining them. Are you saying either of those two? I'm, I'm saying neither exactly, but in that, in that same constellation, so let me be explicit. Um, I, the renormalization group prescription is not unique. I can, I, can, I can coarse grain the same system in two different ways to get two theories that are incompatible. And what I mean by incompatible is one recognizes one fundamental object, the other one says it's composite, and vice versa. Right. So well, you wait a minute. What, um, I, I still don't see what it means by incompatible, because they, they still are constrained by whatever the data are that they're theories of. The um, a finite amount of data. Right. But, but so, the that, so then they, so they, that means they make different predictions about something you haven't looked at yet? They, you, there, it is always possible that two theories, that two theories that agree in all the finite data will disagree in something you haven't seen. Well, that's yet. just Duhem, right? Yeah. Uh, who? Duhem's thesis. Duhem. Okay. Yeah, we generally, we, we, we think our physical theories yeah, are formal, formal theories because they predict yeah. about infinite numbers yeah, yeah. of events, yeah. Yeah. infinite okay. impact on counter with infinite. Yeah, so one, one way to think of it, I think, is that, that this is a one way to formalize human uh, thesis. Okay, so. Okay. I think I'm on board with that. Wait, I guess I I'm confused is, about, about the <laughs> physicist. Graham was a French physicist of the late 19th century who argued that all physical theories are empirically underdetermined uh -huh. and that therefore there was no rational basis for choosing between them. Or at any rate, he said things which have suggested that to many philosophers and historians of science subsequently. Yeah, I don't think it would be okay. so strong, but he would say, you're right, I think that some philosophers overreacted or overinterpreted or whatever. But his point was logical, that is, uh, even though the data are compatible, maybe compatible yeah. with only one theory, for instance, at the moment, in fact, alternative theories, you, you can have new data that will... Yeah, it's closely right. related to Quine's thesis, yes. and in particular to the claim that two total theories of the world could be mutually, logically incompatible, and yet agree about all empirical observations. Right. But it's also important that Duhem didn't just make this as an abstract general philosophical point. He made it in the specific context of work in mechanics. Yep. Right? So there was actual mechanical systems he was, he was right. talking about. But it has so, been generalized. Yeah. Well, no, he didn't generalize it. Right. Subsequent people but, generalized it. Duhem said it about but, mechanics. Yeah. Right? I guess but I'm confused. This is a much more general version of, of Duhem thesis. Yeah. 
it seems to me that you're adding an extra ingredient. I mean, the conversation is, which I'm a little confused about. So one is just saying there are theories of the world, and one is saying that the evidence that's yeah. gathered about the world is consistent with both those theories. That seems to me to be a, a pretty big addition. Are you saying that as well, that it's not just that I can start with fundamental theory, coarse grain, and get two incompatible theories, but rather those two incompatible theories are also consistent with the evidence that's collected about the world? Yes, and that, that would also be the case. 